Major John Scopes is a leader for the Earth military. Earth has been at war with an alien race that is technologically superior, physically stronger, and more ruthless than humans at humanity's worst. The war has been going very badly for Earth, and now Skokes has captured and has found himself a prisoner of the alien race. He's cast into a filthy dank cell well below ground, and Skokes notices a person sitting alone near him in the cell and goes over to find out who it is. His cellmate is a young woman who identifies herself as second class cadet Bree Tristan, who was located in the Europa base. Skokes thinks that she's a fighter pilot and flew an Exeter fighter plane, but Tristan clarifies by saying that she was captured on a training flight. He then asks her how long she's been here, to which she replies by saying that she isn't really sure, as there's no way to tell, but estimates it to be around three months. Tristan further explains that she was with her commander and a two-man trainer, and they were practicing a refueling scoop in a Jovine atmosphere when they got captured and the commander died a few weeks ago in a cell. After that, he notices a skin graft on her right forearm, indicating that the aliens were trying to change her into one of them. Stokes tries to touch a luminous object in the cell, but Tristan warns him not to do so, as they'll stop giving off light for hours. After confirming that the aliens can't hear or see their activities in the cell, Stokes tries to find a way out. But Tristan tells him that the commander also did what he was trying to do right now, and advises him not to get himself in trouble with the aliens. She says that they've tortured the commander every day until he died. To her surprise though, Skokes is not convinced and believes if he just gave up, it would be over for all of humanity. He also wonders how a woman of her age was in the army, and Tristan tells him that she was drafted by the UNDF. They introduced conscription to everyone over the age of 18 the year before, but Skokes had no idea about this because he wasn't on Earth for a very long time. She continues to tell him that they came to her school and tested all the students, and decided she had what it took to be a fighter pilot. And now, Tristan is in despair and only counting her days until she dies. Skokes gets furious by what he hears, and hails to the aliens by ranting about how he took out their capital ship. Moments later, an alien jailer supposedly opens the door and steam releases. The alien jailer then throws in two large centipede-like creatures. Skokes watches them scuttle madly in the cell until Tristan catches one of them, rips off its head and squeezes the carcass, pouring its insides down her throat. Seeing this, Skokes is disgusted, and Tristan says it took her several days before she realized that it was the only food that they were going to give her, and she goes on to add that he should get used to it. But even though she said that, Skokes still refuses to eat it. Tristan lets him know that the aliens can actually understand their language, and can even communicate through a machine. At that moment, she felt a sudden pain in her forearm, and Skokes discovers that the aliens were trying to override her human DNA with their own by doing multiple experiments on Tristan. As Skokes forcibly tries to remove the graft by squeezing it, two alien jailers enter the cell and seize Tristan, dragging her away as she struggles and screams in terror. While she was gone, he looks through the air vent to find an escape route, and after that, he breaks one of the crystal rocks and sharpens it to cut through the air vent. A couple hours later, they throw Tristan back in the cell, where she huddles against a wall, crying in fear. Skokes notices the kind of horrible experiment that the aliens do on her, Skokes then tells her that he'd found a way out, and he says that it's gonna take time and that she should stay strong, but Tristan is still hopeless as she thinks that she's losing her humanity day by day. Tristan asks Skokes how long it's been since he went to Earth, to which he replies that it's been four years. Tristan states that Earth is not the same anymore, and it changed a lot in those four years, and the war has changed everything. Contrary to Stokes, Tristan doesn't miss it, saying that it's the beginning of the end. Skokes, though, was stubborn and insists that he can still beat the aliens, and that they're only on the brink of defeat because Earth still hadn't come together as one world. Sometime later, Skoke begins cutting the air vent while hanging from some fabric. He hears other human beings screaming through the other air vents, and during that time, Tristan admits that she and the late commander tried to off themselves, but he was too weak 
and she was afraid. Skokes tries to confront her by saying that they're going to escape and that he will not leave without her. He also tells her his plan to escape, that after he cuts through the air vents, he would get a weapon, kill any of the aliens coming their way, and leave on one of their ships. Tristan admits that she's never been with a man before and only imagines what it was like to be in love. She says that she imagines making love would be the most wonderful feeling. After that, she gets intimate with him and starts taking off her clothes, and when Skokes hesitates, she pulls away and claims that he doesn't want to touch her because of what she's becoming. Skokes assures her that he thinks she's beautiful and they eventually start kissing. But shortly after, the doors open and the alien jailer walking in. Skokes tries to fight the jailer and the alien throws him against the wall and he then takes Tristan away. Over the course of several days, the aliens continue dragging Tristan away and then returning her back to the cell. And meanwhile, Skokes was making good progress with his plan, cutting through several air vents. One day, while in the air vent, a creature of some kind bites his leg, severely injuring him. Skokes manages to kill the creature when at the same time, the alien jailer was bringing Tristan back to the cell. Skokes accidentally drops the crystal rock that he was using to cut through somewhere in the cell. And just when he was about to get the crystal rock, the steam from the alien jailer opens the door, pushing the rock inside a hole. Skokes rushes to Tristan to let her know that he made it into the air vent, but also that he lost the crystal in the hole. He then goes over to it and puts his hand in the hole to retrieve the crystal, but immediately screams in pain as the liquid inside is filled with acid. He quickly puts his hand in the water to relieve the pain and starts looking for another crystal in replacement. Tristan tells him to rest and goes to the hole, taking off the bandage on her forearm. Then she reaches inside without feeling any effect from the acid and manages to get the crystal out in one piece. The jailers continue to throw the centipede-like creatures into the cell and Tristan shows Skokes how to catch them and consume them and after the meal, Skokes gets up into the air vent. Tristan didn't want him to leave but Skokes insists that he goes and promises that he'll come back for her before the aliens do. And soon after, the alien jailer comes and takes Tristan away again while Skokes was still at the air vent. He then follows her voice to get to where they're taking her and eventually catches up to her and he sees her through an air vent while she was lying on a table and an alien was doing experiments on her. He then quickly takes the crystal out of his pocket and tries to stab the alien from above. Not long after, the alien realizes what's happening and takes his crystal and uses it against him and the alien cuts his hand off. Back in the cell, Tristan finds Skokes unconscious on the floor, and after he wakes up, she tells him that the alien has cut off his hand. As he gets up, he sees Tristan is now almost looking like one of them, with half her face completely changed. During their long hours alone together in the cell, they stand to bond, and Skokes starts to have feelings for Tristan. The aliens stop dragging Tristan away, and it appears that they're going to leave her and Skokes to die in the cell of starvation and thirst. Coming to terms with his fate, Skokes suggests that they should end their lives themselves, and tells Tristan to let himself unalive her so she won't feel anything, and Tristan agrees. Right before he snaps her neck, he breaks down and says that he couldn't do it. And he tells her to have hope not for them, but for Earth, and Skokes then confides in her that before he was captured, Earth had amassed its fleets from a major tactical strike offense that they were sure would take the aliens off guard and unprepared, stating that only a handful of people know about the information. And after 30 days from the day he was captured, Earth's force will strike the aliens' home world. She then says thank you for telling her this as the two alien jailers come into the cell. Tristan quietly gets up and then begins to go submissively with them and in an act of sacrifice, Skokes pleads with the aliens to take him instead. But suddenly, Tristan turns around, her face and voice expressionless, and she tells Skokes that he doesn't understand the truth. The aliens aren't changing her at all, but changing her back. Tristan then leaves the cell with the jailers, and Skokes stares in disbelief as he understands the terrible truth. Apparently, Tristan was part of the alien race who was transformed to look like a human to probe Skokes for military intelligence and he has just told her that an Earth offensive that could save his people 
is on its way to their home planet. And now, the aliens would have time to prepare for it and crush the offensive completely, and the closing narration is spoken as Skoke screams in anguish, understanding that he may have doomed his planet and his race to annihilation.